Hey guys, welcome to the Heart of David. This is my second. <clears throat> this is my second take at this. If you've had someone who have who has died uh, with faith in Christ, you want to hear this. Um, it seems every time I make a video, every time I start talking, um, that my rabbit goes nuts. You should have seen what my rabbit did yesterday. I don't know if he's like jealous. He just doesn't like the talking because I don't really talk that much, right? But uh, just starts doing very strange stuff. Yesterday he went absolutely nuts. Um, so for people who have had someone die on them, I'm sure that's a lot of you, right? You want to meet them again? Well, I have a message for you. And what I mean is, and if you know scripture, you know that the people that you're going to meet when we are in heaven are going to be the people who had faith in Christ because you know the reality of people who didn't have faith in Christ <clears throat> and whatever the cut it, uh, cut off age is I don't know I'm doing this with a kidney stone by the way my stomach is squeezing so I'm not well so I want to read you something to help give you hope and then I'm going to tell you a story of why I'm doing this video So this is 1 Thessalonians 4. I don't want you, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. And I'm going to tell you a story of why I'm doing this. But I don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring uh, with him those who sleep in Christ Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. When it says that we will by no means, the people who are alive will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep in Christ. Um, he always makes a commotion when I talk. Um, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, when you're like, you're like super irritable, you're trying to get something done. I just, I, it's just, oh man, I don't know. I'm I'm going through a time of a lot of stress. School, school, taking care of him, taking care of myself, taking care of this apartment, going out working, motorcycle. There's a lot of pressure, and um, so I'm just irritable. This is supposed to be a message of hope. Uh, this is my second recording too. What I'm trying to tell you is the people who have died before you and you and I, okay? I've heard top scholars talk about this. You don't have to be a top scholar to 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 wonder what does it mean by they will precede us? It, it could be by seconds. It could be by minutes. It could just be something like that. We don't know, and I don't think it matters really either, but, you know, you also wonder... So I had a friend who died when I was 19. I was 18, he was 19. He got hit by a car, 12 at night, on his bike, crushed from behind, and, and anyways, he died. Um, I don't know if he believed in God, but there's always that question of the age, you know? I talk to God and I say, God, you know, like I hope he was at an age where where you can have some grace and I can see him again. So every time, I'm going to tell you a story after this. So every time you have somebody die who is close to you, of course you're going to grieve, of course you're going to feel sad. But you have to remember this. I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow 
as those who have no hope. So those who don't believe in Christ, when someone dies on them, it's the end of the world, right? It's a horrible feeling. Like you, like that's when people start to question, is there a God and all that type of stuff. But for us who believe, like I'll think of my mom, okay, and I'll think of I'll think of my friend there. And immediately, you know, if I feel sad in that moment, that verse immediately comes to my mind. I also want you to understand this. You think, we see all the signs happening around us, okay? There's a lot of stuff happening around us. You know those Olympics that happened? I knew those closing ceremonies were going to be satanic, and they were. Um, I, I showed you a breakdown video of it. Go back and look. They've apologized and everything, but yet they went ahead and, and did it again. That's just confirmation to me that Christ is real, and we're very close to that hour. That gives me hope. That gives me hope. Um, so tough to think, man, when your stomach is just squeezing. So just give me a sec here. I'm going to tell you a, um, a story that happened to me yesterday, and then I'm, going to, I'm just going to stop this. I have another video, by the way, that I did last night, and, um, and you might want to watch that too. So just give me a sec. Try having a kidney stone, trying to take care of a new vehicle, your own place, 12 pain disorders, a pet, and school. This is what I have on my plate. So, And then when I get things like this, it's just like, you know, you feel things closing in. It can be tough. But you know what? Amen to be able to be in that spot, right? Amen to be in that spot. I would rather that than just be straight out suffering. It's, it's a lot tougher for me to speak when my stomach is being squeezed by, like, this is definitely a kidney stone. So when I go to eat next, I know that the back of my kidneys are going to, they're just going to feel like they're being crushed. Um, what I mean is like a main type of meal. So yesterday, um, to, to help pay off, well, just to make money, um, but to, to pay off that motorcycle that I paid for, I don't care. I go out in the, the pouring rain. I bring an umbrella. Hey, if I get soaked, <laughs> um, if I get soaked, I just come, out, come home and use my, my, you know, my dryer, put my shoes in the dryer or whatever, spray some Febreze in it or something. Um... So it was, it was a rainy, it was pouring rain, okay? So just imagine this for a second. And this is why I do this video today. And this has nothing to do with privacy and me talking about having conversation with other people because you don't know who they are. I did tell them I had a, a Christian YouTube channel and I told them what it was. So it's not like that because this will, this will edify you. This, will, this should make you feel good. I came to a door, and uh, the person wasn't interested in candles at that moment. I gave them my card, and they looked, it was a woman, she looked kind of sad. She was older than me, I don't know, uh, you know, between 60s and 70s, something, something like that. I don't want to, just want to give you an idea. She seemed very kind, but she looked down, and... Um, you never know why. Who knows? Maybe I decided to go out in the in the pouring rain yesterday for just this reason, or part of it, anyways. I noticed that um, she had a cross 
she was wearing a cross. And when I see people wearing crosses, I tend to ask them, hey, you believe in God? You know, I start a conversation that way. And she said yes, and she was a Catholic. And so I started to, I forget how it got to it, um, but she said her her brother, who was handicapped, um, had died just last month. And, you know, I said, oh, you know, I'm sorry and stuff. And and uh, because I read the scriptures, I, I started talking to her. I started talking to her about the Catholic system, why I left it, you know, for traditions of men and versus scriptural. She was very open to everything, which, which was good, and it was a good conversation. When she told me about her brother, I felt, you know, I felt bad, of course, right? And a verse came to my mind right away because she had a sad look on her face. And I couldn't think of uh, the first words to it, but uh, the general um, the general part of it. Um, I, anyways, I said, you know, I said to her, um, not to sorrow as others who have no hope. I said, your, your brother is asleep in Christ. I said, he's not in heaven right now. He's asleep in Christ. And then, you know, we'll be raised at the resurrection. So, you get my point, right? For her, that may have been her, her and you know what? On my card is the name David, right? And the name of my YouTube channel is the heart of David because of David King David and because of me that's the reason I, I made that name because it only made sense to me and her brother's name was David I don't think those types of things are coincidences and she I think she was very comforted in that I want anyone who's watching this to know that if you've had someone who has died and believes and and, and why is all the reason more to speak to your family members, I hope you all have, and, and told them about Christ, and told them about the uh, what will happen if you leave this world not believing. But it's such an excellent thing to know that those who believe in Christ and they die, you don't have to worry about them. So when I think of my mom, this verse comes to mind immediately. And people don't look at it this way. Just give me a second. I'm going to explain something to you that I never really hear, but I, I'll explain it to you. It should be a separate video, actually, but... If you're a believer, or not, but especially if you're a believer, this should be a separate video. It's so easy to be um, kind of thrown off about how long it will take for Christ to come back. We're lucky to be in this time to see what we see right now. But let, let's think of people who were, let's think of the 1800s, let's think of the 17, 16, all those who believed. People never look at it this way. When you and I die, okay, so let's say you're 40 years old and you come to Christ. You're going to die when you're say 72 so you're going to see Christ anyways in 32 years yes I understand that, that we were asleep in Christ and we may have to wait another few hundred or maybe a thousand years whatever it is excuse me we're asleep it's like I can't pretend to know okay but you know when they put you under sedation or when you fall asleep it would sorry about those sounds it would be just like that. I don't I don't believe that sleep is going to feel long. 
It's not going to be a long darkness. God isn't going to put a believer in darkness. So you get what I'm saying, right? So let's think of Abraham, Daniel, Noah. Think of them. When they died, they fell asleep. It'll be no different than if you and I died today. The, the feeling that we have is likely not going to feel... It's, they're all going to feel the same likely. Like they're going to wake up and think that whatever it was was just yesterday. So you get my point, right? So even if Christ doesn't come in our lifetimes... So I'm 45, okay? I'm 46 in, in a few months. If I die in 20 years... That's 20 years I'll see Christ virtually, right? I think it's I think it's good to think in, in those terms because that's why Paul says, you know, I ran the race well. He, he well knows that when his eyes close or when they when they cut Paul's head off, that it's for, for you and I not for the people who are alive generation after generation. They're going to say the same things generation after generation, the scoffers. But to you and I, it, to you and I and every other believer for whatever hundreds and thousands of years ago, when we all wake up after we die, it's just going to feel like we went to bed. Think about that. I think that's, that's awesome. So don't, I hope this gives you some hope. Whoever has died, they're asleep in Christ, and that's all you need to know. They're, a, they're more safe than you right now. It means they've won. Even if they died tragically, it means that they have won. They have eternal life, you know that for sure. That's my message today, guys. Uh, sorry for the like being stressed out and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of hoops that I've been having to go through because of school, because of just all types of things, you know. Like, um, if you don't uh, if you don't take chances, you can't really expect to go places, right? It's the same with your health. If you if you if you're not willing to investigate your health. If you're not willing to introspect about your psychological state of mind, your spiritual state, right? All these things. To get better, you're going to have to jump through a lot of different hoops. And for me right now, I'm having to go through a lot of hoops. So anyways, guys, God bless. I hope this has edified you and has helped you. I, I, I hope to reach people who have um, had someone that recently died. I know what it feels like. I haven't had anyone die uh, that since I've had like a true faith in Christ. Born again is what I mean. Um, yeah, and I'm not superstitious, anyways. God bless, guys. I hope this has helped you.